Alright, so the fly I'm going to be tying today is uh, called a stimulator. And it basically uh, imitates an adult um, stonefly. Uh, just a great, great all around pattern. Um, great for teasing them big, big trout or even steelhead up to the surface to hopefully, hopefully trigger a bite. Um, so I'll, I'll get to tying it. So the hook I'm going to be using today is the Orvis 122J, um, and that's in the size 6. <clears throat> so just get that in the vise. The third I'm going to be using is the UTC 140 in the Rusty Brown. So let's get our thread on. And work towards the back of the hook, putting down a layer of thread. And we'll stop when our thread is in line with the barb of the hook. And just a little bit further. This should be good. Alright, first thing we're going to do is tie in our tail, which is going to be um, elk hair. And I've already clipped off a bit of that and put it in my stacker, give it a few taps, pull that out and our tip should be should be lined up. Alright, don't need too big of a clump for this, doesn't need to be a huge tail. And for length, you're looking about half the length of the shank. So just secure that down with a couple of loose wraps. So kind of pull the fibers up just to make sure they're right on top of the hook shank. And now we want to wind forward with real loose wraps until um, we're about two thirds back up the hook shank. If you pull down too tight the ends are going to flare and it's going to make it really hard um, to tie in the tips. So just best you can, one wrap right in front of the other until you're about two thirds of the way up. And then you can go ahead and Pull those up, trim those at an angle, like so. That'll help form a nice taper. You don't want any any big lumps or bumps at the at the front of this fly because we're going to have to tie in a tie in a, a wing and a hackle. So we want to start our taper early on in this fly. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold this tail on top of the hook shank and as I work back what you're going to see is as I cinch down on this elk hair it's going to loosen up the thread wraps that I had put down before. Don't worry about that because we're going to be putting dubbing on over top of this. But we'll just go ahead and tighten down but then as you get towards the end Loosen back up with your thread wraps because we don't want to flare this tail out. Just want it to stay kind of a nice loose bunch right there, right at the back of the right at the back of the hook. Alright, so you can wrap back forward, you can check your tail. If you got any loose fiber or longer fibers, you can go ahead and tug those out. Um, but work your thread back up. And we're gonna tie in our rib. Alright, so we're going to tie in our rib on the way down, and that's just going to be a 8 pound piece of mono. Tie that in on the top. And remember, anytime you approach that back where that tail started, you want to kind of 
loosen up with your thread wraps or end them just a little early. So now we can go ahead and dub our body, which is just going to be this um, super fine dry fly dubbing in a pale yellow. That's by Wapsy. So you just want to start off real thin with this towards the back. We don't want to build it up too much. We want to kind of form a, our carrot shaped body. Get a good layer of this on there. And the super fine dubbing goes on the thread real easy. Because I am using a darker thread, you might see a little bit of it through there, but don't worry about it. Um, that'll just kind of add to the add to the segmented look of the of the abdomen. So I'll just start wrapping forward. And then uh, remember form that carrot shape. You can kind of do that by by overlapping each wrap of dubbing kind of slightly on the wrap before it. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So you can just kind of pile one one wrap slightly on the one that you just laid down, and that'll kind of help help build up that carrot shape. Need just a little bit more of that. All right, and now we can go ahead and tie in our hackle that's actually going to wrap backwards over this body. I call that reverse palmering. So what I'm going to do is I've just cleared away a little bit of the quill there. I'm going to tie that in nice and tight. So I'm not going to double this over on itself because these quills have a tendency to get get pretty thick here towards the base. And important to note, I am tying this in by the base because I want those fibers to um, taper down as as they go towards the back. All right. So now I can just palmer that backwards and leaving a good amount of space in between each wrap. Um, you're probably looking about six or seven wraps heading backwards with this hackle fiber. All right. And now we're basically going to end up using our that ribbing that we tied in um, to tie off that hackle in the back and then we're going to wrap that forward and we're going to protect those hackle, those wraps of hackle um, by, by kind of wrapping right over top of them with that mono. And it might trap in a few fibers but You'll be surprised it doesn't doesn't necessarily catch in too many of them. You can kind of wiggle it through as you work forward. That'll kind of help minimize it a little bit. All right. So you can tie off that mono, the front of the fly there. Nice tight couple wraps. Careful not to catch in too much hackle. And now I'm going to cut this mono just a little bit in front of where I clipped off that quill. Again, we're trying to maintain um, or eliminate as many bumps as we can. So that will kind of help form that taper heading to the hook eye. Wrap to the hook eye, and then we'll come back nice and tight. Now we're ready to tie in our, our wing. But we can go ahead and just, should be able to just bend and break that off. And if it's not breaking right away, we don't want to pull too hard. You can just go in with your scissors and give that a clip. 
right? So now we're going to grab a clump of our elk hair, and we want a, a bigger clump um, for the wing. And then when you do trim your hair off your hide, trim as close as you can. That'll ensure that next time you go to clip off a clump, you can you can trim nice and close. Now with this, I like to hold it by the tips, give it a little twist, that'll open up the fibers. Then you can pull out all the broken fibers, or the real short ones, um, and then most importantly, uh, most of that under hair, um, that, that'll kinda, that'll help it when you go to put it in the stack, or it'll, it'll stack real nice for you, nice and easy. Right. Load that into our load that into our stacker. Got a few taps on the desk. That should line up the tips for you. Just grab those out. Now for length on this, you're, you're looking for about just a little bit shorter than the tail. So just hold that on there. What I like to do is just take and use my scissors, clip off just a little bit of that. And I'm going to clip off um, kind of behind uh, where, just back from where I'd tie, tie in my head. And that's kind of my measure. So now, now I'll take these over my bag and I'll give those a clip. Now I'm ready to tie those in. Let's just hold those nice and tight. Go ahead with a nice single loose wrap and then keep a hold of these fibers the whole time uh, with your with your left hand as you're tying that in and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and start tying this in, cinching it down a little bit more and it's going to pull off some of my thread wraps but that's okay just just keep at it and tie those in we can go and clean those up later So it's just like tying in that tail that we tied in earlier. Alright. And then get looser when you get towards where you tied in the wing. And it should end up sitting right on top of the hook for you and not flared out. Alright. So now we're going to go ahead and tie in our hackle. And this is, the uh, first one I tied in was uh, Coachman Brown. And that was a rooster cape. This is a rooster cape as well. Um, this is a grizzly, white grizzly. Um, or natural grizzly, I should say. So we're just going to go ahead, tie this in. And again, we're just going to clip off our, our quill on this one. Um, Probably clip this one off a little bit shorter. Secure it down nice and tight. Don't want that to slip out of there. Now we're ready to put down our dubbing. And what I'm going to use is a UV hot orange ice dub. And I'm just going to put down a nice thin layer of this over those thread wraps. And what that's going to do is it's going to give our hackle something to sink down into. Um, can be real frustrating trying to wrap these uh, these hackle fibers onto uh, onto a smooth surface when it's angled like this. They'll have a tendency to slip slip right off and ca cause you all kinds of headache. So this will help eliminate that and just kind of pull that tight as you go. Like I said, you don't you don't need much of this, and we want to kind of maintain that that taper. 
towards the front. And you can wrap to pretty much right behind the hook eye. We'll just tie our head in right over top of that. Pull off any extra that you might have. And then sweep those back. Any fibers that were pointing forward. Just do a couple thread wraps to hold those back. Now we're ready to wind our hackle forward. And I hope I have a long enough feather here that I don't have to use hackle pliers, but we'll see. So we'll get that started. Try not to catch in any of our any of our elk hair. And now you want to palmer this forward. Um, but a tighter palmer than what we did on the abdomen with the Coachman Brown hackle. Let's run that forward and I think I can get one more wrap here. We'll see. There we go. Let's come around the top of that. Tie that off. Couple of good wraps. And then bend that backwards. And along with any fibers pointing forward. And then just concentrate on tying in a nice, nice head. And you can go straight into your whip finish. One, two, three. That should be good. Go ahead and clip your thread. And then you should just be able to break away that point. And there's your finished stimulator. Um, besides uh, just a little bit of head cement on there, it's uh, pretty much done. Um, like I said, this is a great fly. Um, it's got a big buggy look. Um, you know, besides helping hold that hackle in, that, that UV orange kind of creates something something for the fish to look at. Um, so go ahead, tie this fly up. Um, you know, it can be real thrilling when you get when you get those big fish to come to the surface. So um, hope it catches your fish.